Hey guys, Fan here again, and today I'm bringing you guys a basic beginner a Dark and Darker tutorial. Now, Dark and Darker is a game that's been getting a lot of hype lately, so I decided to go and check it out for myself. A lot of people have been saying that it's fun, um, and, you know, it's, it's just been the game that everyone's been talking about lately. And I can confirm that it is, in fact, pretty fun. If you're wondering what the game's about, it is basically half survival, half battle royale it's a combination of both you drop into a dungeon you fight a lot of pve monsters that are kind of uh hard hitting and not easy to beat you loot the dungeon loot the monsters at the same time that other people do so it's kind of a pve vp you're fighting both monsters and players and you can see starting right off the bat here where with the warrior i have the completely default gear that you start off with every round and we're just slaying two of the monsters, a mummy and a goblin here. Now, the trick with the PvE actually is every monster has a predetermined attack which you can eventually recognize the attack animations for. And once you recognize the attack animations, it becomes a lot easier to sidestep them. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later as we just immediately meet a player here. And you can see he is also a warrior and we just start swinging at each other. Now. The crosshair is where your weapon is always going to swing. So you can see I'm trying to keep my crosshair on his head. And every weapon has a attack uh, pattern. And with the sword, it always swings from the right to the left first, and then the left to the right, and then it pokes from the center. So you want to keep that attack pattern in mind at, as we dispose of this guy. And you can see in the middle of that fight, both of us were actually kind of glowing. That glow was one of our abilities. It was our E ability on the fighter which is second win, it restores HP, about half of your HP bar. Um, so both of us have used that. Now you can only use that once per run, I believe. So now having used that, we I can no longer use that for the rest of this run. But luckily for me, there's a bunch of cabinets here where I kind of hit the jackpot. I got two more healing potions, as well as a bunch of this golden goblet slash coin slash jewelry. Uh, which will be useful if we can make it out of this dungeon because you can sell that stuff to vendors to get a lot more gold in which you can use to buy gear and stuff later. Uh, so we might get a peek at that later as well. Now another quick tip is that you want to be killing all of these jars that you see on the ground here. Every time you kill a jar, chances are it's going to drop something so make sure to hold your torch up and try to find whatever it's dropping, pick it up, see if you want it. And another mommy, mummy spawning here. So going back to the PvE here, you can see the mummy animation, he kind of groans and then he swings his arm at you. And the good news is your basic default sword, the arming sword, outranges most of these mobs. It definitely does for at least the mummy and the goblin. The only exception might be like archers or skeletons, which have a long swing. Um, but for mummy and goblin, you can always just kind of backstep as they're attacking and you can get out of range of their attack. Uh, as you notice, I've been doing that with pretty much every uh, goblin or mummy I encountered, and that is a very reliable way to never take damage, or at least mostly mitigate damage you take from these melee minions. Um, a single auto attack will take out a third or to a half of your life sometimes, so really important that you try to not get hit by these melee autos as much as you can, and the best way to do that, like I said, is to recognize the attack pattern and then backstep out of it. Now, with the fighter, you also have the shield, so you can block as well, which I'll expand on a little bit more. Um, blocking can be a little unreliable at times, though, because you have to block the entire weapon swing of the other uh, monster or person, or it doesn't, you know, the damage will still go through, even if, like, a tiny bit of their weapon and hits you before your shield blocks the attack damage still goes through um you can see there i found a bit of a new player made quick work of him and as we encounter this death beetle that's flying at us you can see we're making use of the shield uh, death beetle shoots kind of like a range projectile and it makes that hissing noise right before it shoots so as long as you recognize that put your shield up um, in front of its mouth every time you can uh, deal with that pretty easily without taking damage. Now you can see I'm looting this, this rogue, which we made quick work of earlier. He didn't have that much, but he did give me kind of an armor upgrade. Um, if I haven't mentioned it before, this run we're using all default items 
So this is the same items you would have at the start of the run. And so everything I'm, you know, equipping is stuff I found in this run. And you'll notice the circle is closing in. You might have seen a little bit of the animation there. And just like with any other battle royale, there's a circle. It closes in on the map. It gets smaller and smaller. If you are outside of that circle, you're going to take dot damage every second. Um, it's not too bad in this game. You can stay outside in the storm, quote unquote, for quite a while before you die. So sometimes you can go out there. You can see here I used an invisibility potion. This loses aggro. I was hoping to lose aggro uh, of this minion, and I was hoping it would like walk away onto the, the other person that we saw. That clearly was not happening, though, so I decided I had to find another way out. Couldn't get by the skeleton knight there, or skeleton champion as it's called, so I went the other way. And I'm not really trying to fight it because that thing is kind of like a raid boss. If you guys watch the HOTS videos, it's like a samurai camp, you know, you can, very, very difficult to deal with that thing on your own. Plus, I saw someone else running around earlier, so I'd probably get, you know, um, third partied if I was trying to take down a PvE boss by myself that would give the other guy a really good chance to just third party kill me. So I'm just kind of running around now. Um, you can see on the top right it says one person escape portal has appeared. That's what you're aiming for. That is how you win the game. Um, you need to get to one of these escape portals and you need to activate it and enter the portal in order to escape with your loot. And that is the goal of the game. You want to escape with your loot so you can sell it, buy better loot, come back in more looted next run. You can see here I found a little bit of a shield upgrade, but at this point I'm completely out of healing, which I think is one of the main problems with Fighter. You, you start with a very limited amount of healing. Basically, you just got your second wind and that's it. We were lucky to find some healing potions, but if you're brand new starting, don't have healing potions, second one is all you got. So at this point, I'm really not trying to fight too much anymore, but luckily I discovered an escape portal. So this is what the escape portals looks like. It's basically just like a stone that looks kind of, you know, a stone with a lot of blue cracks. And once you channel it, this blue portal appears. And once you go in the portal, like I just did, that is how you escape. So that was a successful run. We escaped, killed two players, got out with an inventory full of loot. And what you're going to do with this loot is um, you're basically going to go to the merchant section here. And there's two merchants that you are going to visit most frequently. The first one is the collector here. Uh, he takes all of the jewelry, all the cups, the gob goblets, um, the gems, so you can sell all that to him. You can see he's uh, giving me gold in return here, which I can use to buy more equipment later on. So you just click sell and make deal. And the other one that you're going to frequently use is probably the weaponsmith who will buy all the weapons and armors that you might not want. So we have a bunch of these gray armors. We're going to sell it to him. If you get like blue and above or even green and above, you can actually go to the trading post and try to sell it to other players. But that's a little bit more complicated. For now, we're just going to, you know, sell it to the weaponsmith. Plus, all of the stuff we found was not even green. So most likely other players would not want it. If you did want to do the trading post, though, that would be under the trade section. And that's about it for this video. If you guys want to check the game out, it is free on Steam as Dark and Darker demo for a few more days. And I believe it's going to be releasing later this year, around April or something. Um, but remember, the biggest tips of the video are if you want to escape, make sure to not take any damage from the PvE minions. All the PvE minions um, that are melee, especially the goblin and the mummy, you can dodge their attacks just by kind of sidestepping or backstepping. I like backstepping out of range of their weapons. And for something like skeletons or archers, you got to use your shield if you're a fighter in order to block it. Um, yep, that's it. If you guys want to check the game out, you can do so on Steam and let me know how it feels for you guys.